So hello everyone, thank you uh, for taking time to join us today. So I um, would like to welcome you all for today's webinar titled Uniplot User Training. So uh, before we start, uh, I would just like to introduce myself as the moderator of this training. My name is Ali Kobesi and I'm the Worldwide Training Manager for FEV STS. So today's training uh, will be presented by Adrian Lavo. Uh, he's our colleague and he's the product manager of Uniplot. So today's agenda, where Adrian will take us through a general presentation of, um, of Uniplot. We'll, we'll, uh, he will show the different uh, part of the interface, how you can import data, how you can generate gra graphics, how to do reports uh, and exports, and finally, the interesting part uh, about the sequencer. Okay, so thank you for joining to this training session for Uniplot. Uh, as um, Ali told you today, I will make a short presentation of uh, what is Uniplot, uh, some general information, and then we'll go through technical details of how using Uniplot and make the best of it. So Uniplot, uh, first so that you know, just in case, Uniplot was bought by FEV uh, mid-2018 and is now part of our FEVSTS products. So Uniplot main functionalities are analyzing dynamic test and static test. It was meant originally for static test, but with the years it came evolving and now can be easily used for dynamic test analysis. Uh, it's a really powerful tool to make advanced graphics. So as you will see, whether it's 1D, 2D, 3D, it's no problem. Uh, you can also manage waterfall or polar graphic creation. And you can create really fast, high quality reports uh, uh, with the following format, PDF, Word. You can insert latex uh, formula, which can be good for uh, high quality mathematical equations. It has a module called Uniscript that will not be treated today, but I mentioned it so that you know, which allows improving the capacity of Uniplot by coding some scripts and creating functions as you need. And as mentioned, the report possibility of Uniplot, um, you can easily export your templates to PowerPoint too, I forgot to mention it, uh, in a really easy way. And on the top of all this, you will see that Uniplot has um, an add-in module which allows to improve its capacity by some code present in the software but not loaded at the beginning of Uniplot, such as an emission report add-in, engine map calculator, RD calculator, as examples. Okay, so that's all for Uniplot presentation. Now, we'll start this tutorial for today. Um, this first part, the before we start part, will be about setting up Uniplot, um, some specific technical details that will ease your life while working with Uniplot. And then we'll go through all the function of Uniplot that can be shared today. So before we start, let's go and dive into Uniplot. When you start Uniplot, I will recommend you some options so if you don't do it today, you can do it later on while watching again at this video. Okay, so we open Uniplot. I put it on the side and going in the tools option first, one which was not mentioned. We have here colleague from all over the world. So if you want to change the, set, the language settings of Uniplot, you go into tools open this window and here you can choose the language you like you like to work with. You can go to Dutch, English, Japanese, Russian or Chinese. Okay, so now the graphic configuration. So it's a bit technical, but it's important because it's, let's say the first things to do when you open a new Uniplot to be happy with the way you work. So tools, more options and we'll work with the graphic configuration. You will go to the installation tab and the, the, the 
configuration I recommend is this one, GDI Plus. Here, you can see that in my case, I have other things because they work. But if you feel you have an issue with the graphical interface, you can go to the one recommended in the PowerPoint. Then another point is the data file directory. We will talk extensively about that. You will see that Uniplot creates some files when you work with it. If you want all those files to be stored in one single place, like I do, for example, you can here give him the place where to store those files. Personally, I store them on C, temp, and C2. And second point, allow special characters in channel name. You will see that Uniplot automatically replace all special characters by underscore special characters being those ones if you don't want this behavior to happen just click this option and okay so everything is reminded here in the document if you need it now the add-in manager you will see that uniplot is really easy when you want to import new data you don't have a lot to do but you might have to include some add-in to allow the import of the data. For example, in the automotive industry, the, um, the lines that are in red here are one of the most common you might have to work with. So as a recommendation, I would say that you could add those options in your Uniplot uh, layout. So you would go to Tools, Add in manager, and here you can select the option I am telling you about. Once it's done, you just click on OK and they will be loaded. Sometimes you have to restart Uniplot for some of them. If you don't do that, no problem, but whenever, for example, you will want to import an MDF file, Uniplot will by itself tell you that the add in is missing and it should be loaded. It will ask for your authorization and load the plugin. Okay, so we are done with Uniplot preparation. Let's take a step back to the technical points and discover Uniplot interface. So as you can see, Uniplot interface is divided in seven main parts that we will see in detail right, right after. So the main menu, which is a contextual menu, you will see it change depending on what you're doing. Then the shortcuts that are a fixed function provided by Uniplot. The data brother is where you can have an overview of the data you're working with. User toolbar where you can add your personal functions. The log zone in black here and the list of folder which is kind of an history of all the files you have been working with and the work zone last but not least, where you will draw all your curves and data and tables. So let's start with the main menu. Before starting, please note one thing. You will see one color code really easy. If you have to remember one thing of today's training, because that will be a lot of information, that is the red parts, because they are the ones that you will have to deal with uh, on the first day you use Uniplot. So uh, I will go through every, every menu, give you an overview. So the file menu is the basic one for saving the work zone, the one you can find in any window, Windows software. Then you have the new data import. So this is important because this is it is with this button that you will import data into Uniplot. Then export. PDF words, so this is the, the button to, to do the export is here, and alias creation, I will explain you how you deal with this. So first, a little look at new data import. So I go to Uniplot, you go to file, as I just told you, and import data. So please remember this blue folder, we click on the button, and I will import some data. So I select my file, so here it's some engine test bench data. I open it. You see that Uniplot is working here. And I can see that my file 
was imported here. Okay, and I can see the data. Okay, so remember file and the blue folder. Now reports. Reports is used for personalized report creation. So you can have some personal scripts which will make automated reports. So they will be all store, stored here. And also to have some personal tool. It's a kind of a drawer for personalized items. The edit button is meant to copy, paste, undo, uh, or object insertion, such as images, office object, or latex uh, equations. We will see later during the training how we use it. The view button uh, is used for navigation and display of uniplot windows. So this is important because let's say one day you get lost and you lose your data brother, for example. So you go to the view button and here you have all the wi basic windows and we can see the data browser and it appears again. So please don't forget that if you lose one window, you go into the view button. Diagram. Diagram are all the necessary actions for displaying and editing a diagram. So you have seen that here it does not appear because I'm not editing a document. This is contextual. It will depend on what you're doing. Data. All the actions needed to prepare the data. But also exchange of data and file. This is really important. We will see later on how to use it. Because once you have created your first template, you will want to analyze it on uh, another set of data. And here you will have to work with this button. Tools, so we have already started to work a little bit with this menu. I go here, so we have seen options, tool options to modify the language and to set all the default um, characteristic of all the kind of graphs and elements you can make in Uniplot. Then more option for more specific options that you would like to create, okay. and the add-in manager. So we have seen already three options. So you can see that this is an important part of Uniplot this minute. A lot of interesting things here. Window is the general menu uh, of this kind of software when you can put all the windows in parallel or, or organize them as tiles, for example. And of course, the help button because the help of Uniplot uh, sorry, the, uh, today's training will never replace Uniplot's help. So I invite you to have a nice dive in the documentation because it is really interesting and really complete. Okay, now that we have done the first menu, let's work on the shortcut. So it will be an extensive part. We'll see all the buttons of all the three lines with a little bit of interaction with Uniplot. So if we study the first line, uh, the first, uh, sorry, and we always have the same color code. Red means important. The first block uh, is correspond to all the basic actions of Uniplot of creating documents. So the first one allows to create a document with this uh, little yellow star. This one is to open a document. This one is to save it and then the print, preview, copy, paste, and paste the format. This yellow calculator is to start the Uniscript command. So just so that you have a look at it, I will show it now, I open it. So this is the Uniscript command. So you can use it as a calculator, two plus two equals four, so the world is safe. And you can also, call functions from here. This will not be treated, but you can have a look at it if you're interested. Then the cancel modification plus history is this block with the black arrow being uh, the history of the modifications. So you can use it to, in case you made an error while modifying a graph. Then object selections with the arrow or uh, selection box. And you will tell me which objects. Well, the one which are just here. 
You can create text, you can create table, line, arrows, forms, and give them colors. Now, a little bit like in PowerPoint, for example, you can set the place of the object within the, the frame. So uh, on the foreground, background, and you can group them too. Okay, now we, have, we start with the important part, the data set list button, this black button. I will show you while using Uniplot why it is important. So if you have Uniplot on your computer, you can um, do the same as me at the same time for to, to practice. Otherwise, don't worry, you can do it afterwards while looking at the video. So I repeat the step for importing file so that you remember. So I go in file, import data, the blue carpet, and I choose a file. So I take this one, open. We'll see afterward in detail how to create a graph, but now let's do the easy way. Sorry. I click and drag to the screen. So now I will click on this button, the data set list. And what can I see here? First, you can see that the window can depend, can be on a document scale, document level, sorry, active page level or active diagram. A little bit of vocabulary. Document is the whole file we will be working with. Active page, pretty straightforward. It's the page we are working on. And the diagram is this one. I will show you after how we can work on this. So what kind of an information do we have? We have one line per uh, curve plotted in the page. So we can see that this one is on page one, diagram one, it's called data one. Uh, its ID is 37 and it's made of this data. It's uh, of the style 2D blue and a lot of nice information. Okay, so data set list. The next thing that we can see is this red part, the configuration of 1D, 2D and 3D data set. Let's have a look at this. If I do not select anything, I cannot click on the button. Now I click on it, and you can see that I can click on the 1D and 2D data set configuration. And here is all you need to modify as much as you like the, this curve. So for example, I want the curve in red, and as a dashed line, a little bit thicker. Okay, and okay, it's done. Now, we've seen this first button. I would like to click on the second one. We don't see it really well, but it's a 3D data set configuration. So what does it mean? I need a 3D curve. So I will do as asked and create a 3D graph. So here you can select the information you want to see in the graph. We will see it again afterwards. Uh, and for example, some kind of temperature, which is not zero, that would be better. Okay, this one. I, oh, sorry, I will click next to it and create another graph. So we go back one step and click on the data set list. And what do we see now? We have two curves in Uniplot. We have two lines on the active page. And now look, this diagram is active. And if I click on active diagram, just one curve. Okay, so it depends on the graph that is selected. Now I want to see everything on the same uh, which is present on the page. Okay, and I will show you a secret button, the configuration button. Look, it opens the same exact window at the, as what we had before with this small button. So in case you forget one, you now know two methods for getting to this window. Okay, and now we can see that the second graph is made of three information, uh, 
engine speed, torque, and some temperature. Okay, and we have the data source, a lot of information. So now I close this window, and you can see that now that this graph is selected, I can select this information. So I will click here, and I get the equivalent of the previous window, the configuration for 1D data set, but for 3D data set. And here you can you have all the options you can dream of to set up this graph. And I will show you one an easy one, the color filling between isoline. If you select this option, this color code will be applied to your isoline here. And you get this kind of graph. So I will make them a little bit bigger. Okay. And now we have our information. Uh, okay, so we have seen the two configuration button and I will give you for free a third option to get to the configuration window. You double click on the curve and you see that still we have the same window. Okay, for 1D data set and for the 3D data set, same thing. You just double click on the option. That would be the easiest way. Okay, so now we want to go to the third button of the pack, which is 3D view angle. So you can see it's not activated. So I will make a little exception and go to a button on the second line right now and just have a look at what happens. I go from 2D to 3D and my graph automatically goes to a 3D shape. And now this button can be accessed then you can see it's a way to modify the orientation of the graph the way you like. Okay. So now we'll go back to the 2D view of this graph and we'll see the rest of the options. So you can see that these options are only active when this kind of graphic is selected. If I take the first one, they are not active. Okay, so this one is about labels. So let's have a look at what happens when I click on the 10. Uh, sorry, we'll make a small zoom. So that you can see the graph better. Okay, so now I will click on 10 and look, I click, draw a line and release. Click, draw a line and release. Click, draw a line and release. And you can do that as much as you want. But if you get a, uh, too enthusiastic about it, then you don't see anything. So we want to remove some of them. So let's select the 10 with the red line. And now I will um, show a zone where I want to remove them. So almost everything. And now I can do it in a better way. Okay. Same principle with ISO lines. So if you want to add an ISO line, you select this button and you, it will add an ISO line at the Z position that was given. You can edit the line style. So if you want a green one, for example, okay, and we select, okay. And the ISO line was added. So just like this. Now, if you want to delete ISO line, you click on this button, you select a zone of Z value where you want the ISO line to disappear. Well, as the range is pretty small here, everything disappears, but you can start doing them again. And sorry, I will not use this style. I put it in black now. Okay. And see, it starts creating the ISO lines. Okay, so that's how it works. Last but not least button of the line, this one, the edit Y coordinate. So we will take the first curve and we'll make a small modification. I double click on it to get this window and I will add the symbols. I will go back to the normal, normal kind of line. Okay, and now you can see the data points. And let's say we are not really happy with the values. So we should not cheat, really important, but Okay, can be useful sometimes. I click on this button and look, now I can edit, sorry, I can edit the curve. Oh, sorry, small issue. Uh, 
Okay, I'm sorry, I'm having a little issue, but this button allows you to displace the button on the curve. So you can use it if you like. And this one is to reload the data. I will try one last time. Oh, sorry. Okay, but if you have modified the curves and then you want to load again the, modifi the, the original data in your curve, you select this button. Okay, so that was a lot of information for this first line. We'll start the second one, but before, uh, do we have any question, specific question that uh, people would like to ask, or is it fine at the moment? Uh, no questions so far. Okay, so if they pop up, I will we'll do the two second line, and if some question arise, uh, at the end of the second line, you can ask them, no problem. Yeah. Okay, so um, now I will go back to the presentation. Please remember that those two buttons, so those two set of buttons are the most important one for the configuration of your graphics. So let's start now the second line. So this little field you will see it's to load a test quickly if you have already opened it. So you can look and see here on my side, I have opened a lot of files. So just by clicking on it, then they will be available here and I can plot the data easily. This one is a quick style. So here you can see a 2D line red. You can select the one you want. And when plotting graph, uh, they will be plotted directly like this. Or you can select a curve, then select a quick style and the style will be adapted directly. It's preformatted style, let's say. Now, new diagram and add axis. This is important. So, uh, little information here. We created a new document. If we want to create a new page, you have to click right on the page number and click on as i have done and this window appears and you can select the kind of new page you would like to add so portrait a4 portrait later landscape a4 this is one i like so i will use this one landscape a4 and now a new page is created um okay now i want to create a diagram so i will click on this button so it's a picture of diagram with the small yellow star i draw my diagram i can modify its shape by using the blue markers and if you want to move it you just click in between two markers and now i can move it okay and i will add one curve so now i will start let's find a nice one which is not zero. Well, okay, let's take this one. So I will add it here. Now, if I want to add another curve to this diagram, I have several options. Either I can click on another temperature or another data. Sorry. And, okay, now it's here. So in this case, it worked pretty easily, it was added. But another way to do it is to click on the graph and click on one of those two buttons. And it will make a copy of the selected axis. Let me explain you. I click on the add Y axis right, and it copies this axis on the right. And now we can spread them through the graph. So in the following way, you select the blue marker, okay? And now, so you see that the blue markers are the markers of the selected diagram. Now, if I select the other one, I will modify this axe. And 
let's see if I want to add a copy of this graph on the left, I will click on this button. Okay, pretty easy. And now you can add data to the graphs. Okay. And now to have a nice shape, I will explain it after, but I do it now. You can click on this button, which is the auto scale button. You do it for all the information you're dealing with. And now you have three nice graphs with one curve in each. So we have added a diagram and several axes. So please remember this, it is important to create your graphs. This one, we have started to work with it before, so we can switch from 2D to 3D graph. And if you have, uh, uh, for example, combustion cycle, like um, 500 cycle of in cylinder pressure data, you can use a waterfall diagram to see those data as an histogram. It's pretty interesting. And then the polar diagram to see information depending on uh, on an angle. So those are several rep possible representation of a single graph. Then quick selection of element. Let me show you this. If I go back to the page one, so you can see here I have diagram one. I click on the menu, diagram two, which is the other one. I remove a little bit of the zoom. And if I click on background, background is this yellow, uh, sorry, purple rectangle, which is really the back of the document. So you can easily select one if you have a lot of curves. And here, it, you will see it's interesting. We have the background as before, and we have four graphs here. We have this one, diagram four, diagram one, diagram three, and what is called grid. For this specific kind of graph, the grid is the support of the three other ones. Now, once we have created a graph, maybe we want to make it nicer. So we have started to see that we can work on the configuration of, of the color of the curve and the layout of the curve. But let's say we want to have uh, this axis, which depends on this curve. So I will change its color. I will make it red. We have, we will work with this set of button. The yellow one is meant to change the layout of the axis, not its parameters, its layout. I mean, its colors. So I click on it. First, I take care that the correct graph is selected. I go to the y-axis because this is the y-axis of this graph that I want to modify. And I can modify the line style, the label, and the title. What does it mean? Look, if I go here, I put the mouse on the title. You see it's title. On the numbers, uh, I have label. And on the axis, I have the axis uh, cursor, which means that Sorry, I go back again. When I click on this yellow button, I can modify each of these three parts. So for example, the line style, I can put it in green. I would put it pretty thick so that it's obvious. The label, I can put them in blue and bold, and a little bit bigger. And the title, bold, red. Okay, so you see y-axis and each element of the axis. And now I have modified my title. So you can see that every part of the graphic can be modified. Now I will show you uh, an easier thing to do. You double click on title. So I'll do it for the left graph. I wait to see title on my cursor and double click. And I will select title and label in curve color and axis in curve color. So we find our three elements here, axis, lab, label, title. Okay, and now you can see that it's the same color of the curve. And if I change the color of the curve, for example, 2D fuchsia, everything changes. So it can be pretty nice to make this kind of graph with several curves uh, together. 
So remember, layout to change the layout of your diagram of the selected one, please take care. And now we can change some parameters here with X, Y, Z. So those curves, each one has a Y axis. So for example, for this one, I would want to modify the Y repartition of the curve along, along its axis. So I will click on Y. And here I can choose the minimum value and the delta. So for example, if I want to make kind of a zoom, I can put a delta of 2.5 and it will increase the repartition of the curve. There is an easier way to, to do that I will show you right after, but to, to change in a precise manner, you have to do it through this window. Okay, so that was for the graphic layout and parameters. Now here you have a quick zoom, let's say, where you can select a value of zoom. And then as I've done before without telling you, you have this magnifier with the plus where you can, if you click on it, you can then select a zone to be zoomed. And then this button is to automatically unzoom. And if there is a, a line which is not plotted as you were expecting, you can click on replot and it will refresh the window. Okay, so second line is done. Now we will start with the third line, but before remember how to add a graph and how to change the axis style. We'll do it again after, but important. Now, um, these two first set of elements are to modify table and text. You can modify all the colors of the table, the, the background of the color, the, the side of the table, and same options for the text where you can select the, um, um, sorry, the, the font of the text, the color of the text, whether it's bold or not. I'll just give you an example. I click right on the page, create a new page. I create a landscape A4 page, and I will create a small table here. And you can see that it offers me the repartition between row and columns. I will select one cell and I will select his, its color. Oh, and it can be changed. Now, uh, I can create text with the letter A. To modify the text, you double click on it. Hello world. And now I can modify its size and its color. Okay. Now the cursor. Cursor is a pretty important information for using analyzing data. I go back to this graph. It's here. You see, I cannot select it right now because I must select a curve before. It's really important to select a curve before that. I click on it. And what appears here? First, the window with the value and position of the cursor, X position and the Y value for each label that is plotted in the graph. Now, you can see that we have some horizontal line which depend on the graph that was selected at first when we created it. Okay, and you can move that and the table gets updated by itself. If you want to change uh, properties of the cursor, you just double click on it. And here several options can be selected. You can display the horizontal cursor line, for example, if you want to remove it, you just unclick. And you can even select the color of your cursors. Let's say here, I want to have it red. I will say, okay. And here, I don't have the horizontal line for this one. And, uh, no, for both of them, sorry. And I changed the color. So this is the cursor. And you can remove it by just clicking on the button. And F5 does the same. Now, this set of four buttons correspond to the zoom. So it will zoom on X. You can see the horizontal arrows. And you can zoom on Y. I click here. I unzoom and I zoom. And the same for Y. 
up I am zoom so it's moving in fact but okay and once everything has been messed up you can reset it by clicking on the on the x axis and do a rescale for x and then for each axis do a rescale okay and that can be done either please note that you can click on shift and select uh, various axes and then they will be all, in, all impacted okay by what you will be doing and one thing i didn't show before is you select a curve you can select various curves by clicking on shift ah this one well, small issue but okay i can select several curves and then i click right properties and i will see all the common properties for those curves that can be modified for example i want all of them to be dashed line i click on it and all my curves are dashed and i don't have to it to do it one by one so it's pretty useful now i've shown you the zoom now we can move a curve along its axis so along the y-axis i'm going down and up then i can do the same left or right and again i can auto scale by clicking and getting it everything back with this button now one nice feature too i double click on the x-axis or i can select it and click on x and i will get the parameters i will give a maximum of 10 with a delta of one it means i will have uh, 10 vertical lines you will see okay like this so here i have one part of the graph and now i can use those two buttons to do uh, part of the analysis of part of the cycle and if i click on it i will jump by 10. so now i am going from 0 to 10. okay 0 to 10 and now 10 to 20 20 to 30 and i can see here the cursor moving in the window to know where i am in the cycle okay and now everything i have shown you can be in partly um, changed by the, the action i will show you which is the zoom box i call it like this so you click on the button first you, you select the graph that you want to modify and let's say i want to zoom on y on this axis i will draw a thin rectangle like this over the whole range and it will zoom within this box you can see that the x-axis hasn't changed but i have done a zoom on y and now I go back. So we are finished for this huge block of functions. The data browser, so we have seen it already a little bit. So what are its um, important parts? So this one, the first field, is the data file with which you're working at the moment. So for example, if you are mixing data of two different files in one document you will see both of them here to know which curve you want to pass to your document then the type of diagram here for example we have the 3d one but we have seen before that if i want a simple curve it's 1d i can show it here directly so you can create a lot of different graphs so 3d and 1d are the basic one but then you can do a pressure volume diagram for combustion analysis you can do byte analysis error bars uh, you can work on cycle index um, graph which can be good for example for battery testing where you repeat uh, 600 times the same cycle it's not a pressure volume diagram it's a bit different but uh, it can be treated with this kind of uh, graph then for mdf file so typically inca files you can you can have specific graph which take the correct timeline of the of the channel you can make compressor map so it's pretty interesting and then a typical pie chart category plot a lot of information can, can be taken from here so once you have taken the kind of graph you want here you introduce the label you want to see for each axe and you can have a look at which kind of uh, channel you have with the units and the size and here a small channel preview 
the edit button i will show it to you now you click here on this edit button it's important because it will open a window normally this one that i will explain you in more detail after but where you can modify the data and get interesting information and the button load will create the graphic so i've shown you one way to create the graphic which was like this sorry drag and drop and the graphic is created so here it's zero but whatever and the other one is just to click on load and then it will create a graph like this now i go back to this window here several information can be found uh, first channel explorer i will show you on uniplot it's easier okay so here i can see all my channels and i can see the first line is what is called the global attribute so it's the attributes of the file for which are valid for all the channels and then if i click on a specific channel here i can see the attributes of this channel of this specific channel so it's units it's long name title if there is an offset or not okay and you can change this if you want to see the preview instead of the data and now let's go here my everything is zero but whatever you can see them okay so different information and i will show it again after but one i show it one first time if you right click in this yellow zone you click on add edit formula channel it will allow you to create a formula and we'll see after how it works then the file list so i have shown it to you before on uniplot it's an history of all the files you have been using or the open file and by click clicking right on this zone you can edit the behavior i will show you here configuration and you can choose whether you what do you want to see and how many history you're looking for then the working done we have been seeing it together with the different pages the most basic one so i think it's pretty clear and the log zone where you can have pretty information pretty uh, pretty interesting information about your work especially if something don't work it can give you some insight of why it's not working so up to now we have uh, we had a nice deep in, dive sorry in the in the interface with the basic function starting using uni, uniplot so now we'll go on um, with just a hint of philosophy about how uniplot is working and then uh, we'll see in details how to deal uh, with the graph and the data. For this philosophy point, it's just for you to understand how Uniplot works with the data. So any data that you will give to Uniplot, so here I have three examples, a text file, a PTS file, and a dot file, will be converted by Uniplot in what is called an NC2 file, which can be read by Uniplot. It's a nice way to do because the way of behaving with this file is really fast and you can make some modification and exchanges exchange it with colleagues which are using uniplot then when you put this file in what is called uh, what i would call a visualization file which is empty this one for example the mix of both will make this kind of file and this is an ipz file that can be shared with colleagues using uniplot and they will be able to see your data the way you want them to see it. OK, so after that, this part is optional. I leave it for you to, to read uh, uh, with the document that is available in the webinar. It's um, an explanation on how the graphics are made, and it can be interesting if you want to know more about it. So I will let you see it. I just jump the slides okay now that we are uh, 
kind of at ease with, with the interface, we will see once more how to create graphs in detail and interact with them. So the diagram creation. So we click on file and new. Please remember that this part creates a new document, not a new page. You select the kind of document you want, portrait or landscape, A4, the shape you, you want, and then you can add the page with this button. Click right, new page. Now it's going to be a real step-by-step -step diagram creation. Once I have done this, I click on file, import data, and I select the data that I want to visualize. And then we will find the different channel of the file inside of the data broader window. Remember it, we have seen it just before. And here we see the channel and the previsualization. Inside the data broader, to create the diagram, you select the, the type of curve as I've shown you before. So here we have selected a 2D XY graphic. And we will select the channel. So here, a time and a current value. And then we click on load and the diagram is created. And as I told you before, you can click, drag and drop to have the same effect. To add a second axis and trace another curve in the diagram, you click on the axis, then you select one of those two buttons to add an axe on the left or one on the right, and you load another data set after selecting selecting the newly created axe. Okay, now we have created our diagram. We we'll want to edit it. So what kind of step can we have? So you remember this yellow button, which will modify the layout of the axis, so the colors and the font. It works uh, in a matricial way, so X, Y, Z, and then the line, the label, or the title. And by selecting or not the small tick box here, you can choose to hide, for example, the, the label or the title. And then one clicking on the button, you can select a variety of options. Once it's done, I told you there is another way to do. You can double click on the title of the axis and select those two options, which will allow you to have the axis the same color of the curves. And you click on OK, and you will see them this way. OK, now the zoom options are the one for the X axis and the one for the Y axis, which can be also replaced, I go back to Uniplot, by the zoom box button. Now, if you want to adjust precisely the value of the axis, you use the X, Y, Z button. You can either auto scale or enter the value you want to be used by your graphic. Now, once you have several curves, you can click right on a curve and go to property. That would be the fourth, fourth option, sorry, to get the property of the curve. Please let me remind them to you. So when you have a curve, I select this one, for example, you can click on data set list configuration. That's one way. You can click on this button, a second way. You can double click on the curve, a third way. And you can click right properties. That's a fourth way. This way, you never get lost. And then you can modify the property of the curve. You can modify the line style, you can modify the symbol style, having them or not, and then the style. You can fill uh, the area between the curve. You can make it a bar graph, you can have edge, you can have error bars, a lot of interesting things. And if you want to select and modify all the curve at once, you just click on shift select all the curves you want to modify, and then click right properties. And this window that I've shown you before will open, and you can choose the option you want in common for your curves and set it. Uh, whoops, sorry. 
Now, if you want to add a color legend, you will see, we will see various ways of making legends. So you click on your graph, click, right click, and you go to add legend and add legend for 2D data set. And when you do that, this kind of legend will be created with the color of the curve and the name of the, uh, of the uh, data that was used to create the curve. So it's pretty important, this part. Once it has been done, uh, you might want to add information uh, automatically to your graph. So first, not automatic one, you click on text and the forms and you can draw them as I've shown you before. And you might want, for example, to insert the date. To do that, you right click in the middle of the diagram and you select the add field function by clicking on the button. And this window will appear. Field function are automated scripts which can give you some information. So in this easy case, it's the date. We will see other case at the end of the training. So you select date and you click on OK. And the date will appear. I will show it here on the page three, for example. I will click right, add field function, date. I click OK. And here you can see that the date appear. And if you double click on it, you can see this code. So please note that the late last part where the value is written is not important. You can remove it and do something like this. That of the day. OK. And now you can see that it was adapted. And if you double click on it again, the value is added again. That's why I'm saying it's not useful to keep it. And if you open this document tomorrow, the date will be adapted. So you have to choose the one which fits better for you. So now we have um, added the, the date. We'll go to the next part, which is displacement of a curve following the x-axis. So you want to off, offset your curve. To do so, you have to reach the configuration window. To do so, uh, we have seen the four different way of doing it. Then you do it for one curve and you go to this scaling original data part. Sorry, I will go to Uniplot to show you. We'll see better. So I double click. And this scaling original data allows you to have an offset on X or Y or even factors. So you modify it, it will not modify the original data, just the curve. So here we have added a 10,000 second offset to the value testing. And you can see that the purple curve has been displaced by 10,000 second. Selection of the curve to display, that's an interesting feature too. You go to the data set list button, the black one, and you can click on this little tick to choose whether you want the curve to be displayed or not. And here you can see that the second one is clicked, is unclicked, so the purple curve has disappeared. Adding cursor, so I've shown you how to add a cursor. You select the curve and you select the cursor button. Once it is done, you can add what is called a cursor table. So you click right on a curve always, and this menu will appear. You will go to cursor and cursor data table, and you will see right now what it corresponds to. This window will appear, so I advise you to configure it in the same way for the two first uh, red box. And for the third one, you just choose which information you want to appear in the final table. And if you look here, you will see that this kind of table is created with one line for each of the channel and some extra information. I will do it. Uh, I will do it here. I will add another curve. OK. This one will be red, for example. And I, will, I have one curve selected. I add the cursor. Right click, cursor. 
cursor data table. Now you select those options. Here I will remove some of them because it's a lot. And you click on OK. And you have this kind of table which appears and it's it will get updated when you move the cursors. And it can, it can serve as a legend and as information about statistics. Okay, we have created the diagram, edited the diagram. Now we want to actuate on the raw data. So by adding filter on a curve, on a set of data and create formula. To add a filter on a curve, we will go uh, to the data set list, select our curve configuration, or we can directly click on the curve. And you will click on the edit filter. When you do that, you will see a list of functions that can be applied to the curve. So for example, you can make the absolute value, uh, make a differential, and then extract some part. So you just select it, click on the right a row, and it will go in this list. And they will be applied in order, so you can change the order with those buttons. Here we make a simple one, which is extract for the filter. We edit it. And we say, OK, we want to extract this curve between this value and this value. And then you can see that the blue curve has been filtered. Now, once uh, we have done this, we might want to add a filter for the whole data. So to do that, you will go to data and data exchange. This is the important point I was talking at the beginning. Uh, I would show it live in Uniplot. You go to data and data exchange. You can choose page or document. The only difference is that if you choose page, you can select the different pages that will be implied by the uh, impacted by the modification or not. If you choose da data exchange, it will uh, document, it will uh, impact the whole document. I think it's always better to work on a document scale. So here you choose document and this window appear. This line, you have one line by document, by sorry, by data source available in your document. If you click on the button record filter, this window will appear. And here you can say, I want to filter my file and keep only the point where this value equals, sorry, this channel equals this value. You click on OK and OK. And then you have this output. The whole file was filtered and you only have the cycle number 28 in this case. If you want to remove the filter, I will go one step back. You have to go back to this window and click on remove record filter and you will get your original data back. Okay, now if we want to create a formula, so as I told you before, you go in the edit button, this window will be open and you click right in the yellow zone, add edit formula channel and this window will open. How does it work? It's pretty straightforward. This uh, blank uh, zone is where you create your formula. The what you have before the equal sign will be the name of your formula. You will see it like this in the data brother. So you write my formula equals something. And the something must be channels that you have in your file. And, and that's all, you just have to do that. Some function can be presented to the user with this menu, for example, the, the max function of the of five channel here. So once you have created your formula, you should give the information about the unit, some description and a comment. And there is this option, which is important. If you select it, the formula will be a global formula. It will be saved in Uniplot. And whenever you reopen a file, it will be uh, computed if all the channel needed to compute it are present. If you don't select it, the formula will be created. It will be available but just for this specific file. So you have to think whether you want a global or local formula. Okay, now 
uh, last part if you want to add a set of data from another raw file let's say you have created a template and you want to compare two files so again we go to data data exchange document to impact the whole document and we will click on add file okay now i told you one line corresponds to one file now we have two lines so two files we click on ok and you can see that both files are present here and can be compared it's uh, data it's um sorry battery testing so they are delayed in time but that could they could be for example for wftc testing at chassis dyno it would be the same time and we could compare them on the same time range now if you want to exchange you don't want to compare but you want to exchange the full data same you go to data data exchange document and instead of adding file you replace the file and you might have an issue because maybe in your new file one channel will not have the same name as in your original data so Uniplot will inform you will say hey this file this channel is missing so which one should i use instead so you tell him okay please now use this one you click on okay and the graph will be plotted with the data unit now um, back to the original presentation so now we have uh, dealt uh, pretty deeply with all the diagram if you have questions please note them down and we'll answer them at the end this is uh, we we'll work on the reports now so for the reports uniplot has a pretty interesting feature which is called alias the alias is a variable that can be used throughout uniplot i will show you how it works so let's go here i go to file edit alias table now you can see that i have no alias created so i will add one and i will call it bench, bench cell and let's say for example it's called h12 for example and engine number would be okay and i had a last one that would be fuel okay for example you click on okay and now your alias is ready to be used so i right click and i go to the add field function and now you will look for this insert alias entry and we can see our three aliases so you can look bench cell and it appeared just here h12 let's do another one add field function the fuel okay and it appears here and now you will see a trick i double click here and i can copy this information because it's a code that uniplot recognize i go here and for example i can write bench fuel okay and now you have uh, this kind of automatic table that can be modified for example now if it's gasoline and you can see that it's adapting along okay so this was the alias now the field function let's get a deeper look at it so we have seen two kind of field function at the moment the alias and the date so add field function i will show you another one and all are basically using the same way of working so for example the page number here you can see there is two page number and max so i click on max no sorry page number and i have three now i will add another one right click add field function max and i have it here but it's logical i have twice two times three because i'm on the third page out of three 
And look, I will do something like this. I copy, no, well, I copy the text and I paste it here. So now I will have the page number over the maximum number of page. And this can be copied and pasted wherever I want and see it's getting updated. So it can be a nice feature. Okay, now still for the report, to make it nice, you can add objects. So what kind of objects can you add? So if you click on edit, insert new object, you can add, uh, for example, a Microsoft Excel worksheet. You can create it from uh, new, or you can create it based on a file. So in this example, I have created this pretty fancy table, which means nothing. And I use the create from file option and it's adding it's added to uniplot and if you modify the original file it will be updated in uniplot so it's, it can be really useful in some cases if you want to insert the logo here i insert the fev logo you use insert graphic and if you like uh, latex you can write formula latex and add them with this option now with everything i have shown you we can do this kind of thing, like create a cartridge with some automated information using the alias table, adding a logo. And this can be used as a background for the other pages. So how would you do that? You select the window that contain, contain your cartridge, you right click and you click on select background page. And then this part will be seen on all the pages of Uniplot. I will show you the example if i have my hello world here and um now i click right ah the um, language is a little bit different in the 2020.4 version of uniplot and from now on you have to select master page and now you have to say that the background page i want the third one and i click on set page and you can see that for page one, one and two, the background page is now page three. And if I go here, okay, it's a bit of a mess because I created a lot of graph, but we can find the information that was created before. Okay. The hello world and this table. And if I move it here, it moves here. And it's blocked, I cannot move it here. So it's a good way to create a cartridge to have a nice presentation. Now, to export your work, what can you do? Several options. You go to File, Export. And then you can choose uh, for the most famous one, PDF export, Word, PowerPoint. Uh, you can export your data if you want to change the format to CSV, for example. For the PowerPoint, there is a little trick uh, about creating the template, but which is really easy. I uh, advise you to go in the help file and uh, look for send to PowerPoint, and everything is really well explained on how to do that. And in general, I really advise you to go to the help part, which is really useful. Now, export template. What is it? The idea is to create an Excel template that will be used in the future to pre-format your data and maybe send it to the customer or use it internally. How does it work? You go to the file menu, more file function and create report template. This window will open where basically you have to give the name of the template and the data file example. So what kind, what kind of data will usually be used for this template? You can select the headers uh, of your template, which are part of the global attribute. As a reminder, the global attribute can be found here in edit. And I go at the top of the list and I click on global attribute. So these are the, the possible headers for your file. Okay, you select your headers, then you select the channels that you want to be displayed in the final file and you click on OK. It will create the template. The template is this raw Excel file um, with some placeholders for your data. So what you can do is like I have done here, adapt a little bit the format. You can do 
more complicated things than what I've done, but that could be a thing, and you save it. Then you will go back again to the more file function as here, file more file function, but instead of choosing create report template, you will use the Excel report. I'll go back to the slide. You will say, okay, I want to use this one, this helpful load in this case. You say that you want to apply it to a specific CSV file or MDF or whatever, and it will create this report uh, almost instantaneously. Okay, so we are done for the export, and now the sequencer, which will be the last part for today. The sequencer is uh, a feature that has been added to Uniplot uh, 2020, if my memory is good, which allows you to interact with Uniscript in an, in an easier way if you're not uh, a professional developer. Okay, so first I will show you the, the interface and then make a small example. So the sequencer is used to create, manage, and control workflows. Workflows is the keyword for that. The workflow, there are sequences and subsequences of actions, sorry, which old actions. So the data part, it allows the user to access data files that are being used by the sequencer at the moment with the data slot part. You can have a global object uh, that you can deal with and see its values and what is called the runtime value, some specific uh, variable to act in a way or another within the sequence. Then you have the workspace part where you load the various workspace or various set of action on which you want to work. I will show it to you right after. Then the sequence. So here, for example, the sequence corresponds to the yellow one that is selected here. Um, then here, this small button, you can see that this one uh, is a bit different from the other actions because it is a subset of action which contain these two actions. If you click on play here, it will run the whole thing. And if you click on play here, it will play just one action. Okay, now I will open it in Uniplot. I will not say that. Okay, now I will say, hey, where is my sequencer? It disappeared. So you remember from the beginning, I go to view, sequencer, and it's here. Everything is fine. Okay, so now you can see uh, the workspace part. I click on this small button and I can see what I have in my workspace. You put here everything you need. It's in the Uniplot, uh, in your Uniplot file in Sequencer workspace. And you can see some information that I will explain right after. And so this work, workspace contains three sequences, the example workflow, the PDF export, okay, and the mini tutorial. So today we'll work only with the example workflow. So here you can see various actions. Each action can, can have parameters. So look, if I want to add an action, there are some basic actions that are proposed here with the description on the left. And then we will give information. So for example, run script, see, action, run script. And now I click on it and I can choose which script will be uh, used. So either it's inside the workspace. So if I go back here, here we have the welcome message, which is written here. And you can see that the script is here. So it's a Uniscript script. Uh, and then it, you can give an absolute pass, uh, which is another way to give the information to the workspace, but it's better to include it in the workspace. This way you can share it with your colleagues. You can edit uh, the script if you want. Here we will not. Then another kind of action would be to load a document. And of course, we have to say which document we want to load. Then uh, once it's done, we, want, we might want to look for another file to be loaded in the, in the layout. And then we might want see here, we write the path that has been found to this variable, and then we read it. And then we exchange. 
and then we export to a PDF. I click on it and I can see the, the two sub actions, let's say. So we will run the whole thing and you will see. So I run the sequence. So now there is this small welcome message, which is created and the consequence of this action. It loads the document, but there is already data in it. So maybe I want to change them. So yeah, I will select it. Okay. The data has been loaded, the data has been exchanged. And now the next action will be the PDF export. So here it, it will ask me if I want to export it or not. So I will say yes. Ah, a small issue on my computer, sorry, but then it should have exported to PDF. What is interesting to know here is that, for example, we can remove the fact that we ask for an authorization to export the PDF. So if I unclick this action and I run the sequence again, the whole sequence will run and it will export the PDF without asking. So this is the really nice part about the sequencer, apart from its, uh, that it's easy to use and pretty straightforward, is that you can manage part of the graph of the sequence that can be run or not. And then you can run them uh, step by step, like you select it and you run. If you want to debug or if you just want to run one part or rerun one part because something went wrong. Okay, so um, for the sequencer, that will be all. Sorry. And that would be the end for today for me. I would like you not to forget about Uniplot help. And I will show you again. You go to the help and use it with the content index or search. It's uh, really useful and well done. And if you have any issue while using Uniplot and you should uh, pass the information around you to write uh, to support at uniplot.d any question or issue you have with giving as much information as you can about your issue, giving the data, explaining the situation of the issue, and our colleague from the support will be happy to help you solve uh, your issues if you have some. Thank you for attending the training.